Zags. No program knows Gonzaga better than St. Mary's. And yet the big question is, are they equipped to do it tonight against the high-flying powerhouse number one ranked team, Gonzaga Bulldogs? They lost both regular season matchups between these two teams and a very different style for the Gales. They will not play as fast as Gonzaga, but they will get off to a good start. Matthias Toss makes the first bucket of the game. A good sign for them trying to they got to score points Dave They have struggled to score points the last couple of games and we saw that game against Santa Clara It, it was hard to watch at times because of how stagnant they were at the offensive and the floor If you're gonna beat Gonzaga, you got to have some flow and rhythm to your offense Andrew Nemhard makes the first shot for the Zags a guy who was actually voted as the sixth man of the year in the West Coast Conference and yet here down the stretch He's been a starter the transfer from Florida makes it 3-2 Gonzaga what a difference maker he has been for this team giving them an extra added ball handler out on the floor takes pressure off of Jalen Suggs Tommy Cousy went all the way missed the layup Joel Ayayi he goes all the way and he almost never misses those uh, Defensive transition is the number one key for st. Mary's without question when they had a 10-point lead in Moraga It was because they slowed down the pace of the game. They were making shots offensively Forcing Gonzaga to take the ball out of the net and allowed them to set up their defense And to me that's where it, Tommy Cousy really good player You cannot miss an uncontested layup against this team or it's going the other way Logan Johnson open three no good Jalen Suggs to Kispert who was trailing on the break and that one actually caromed off of Corey Kispert and out of bounds There is Mark few 22nd year more than 600 wins once again. I mean, I, you know, I hate to say you could give it to him every year, but you could give it to him every year, the West Coast Conference Coach of the Year. And 14 times West Coast Conference Coach of the Year has done a tremendous job with this team. You're talking about undefeated during a global pandemic. So many variables and tests and challenges that you face during the course of the season. You know, faced Iowa on two days of practice, flew to South Dakota, took care of business. Come here to the WCC tournament, looking to enter the NCAA tournament undefeated. St. Mary's got to get a shot off. They do with Kyle Bowen, and that comes up way short. One thing about the Gales, they have always been a good shooting team under Randy Bennett. Drew Timmy in transition draws the foul. This year, the Gales just have not made enough shots, and Randy's had a lot of success as the head coach in Moraga, and a lot of great wins against Gonzaga over the years, even in this West Coast Conference tournament. We'll see They're if they can pull off what would be a massive upset tonight. And David, and to your point about what Randy Bennett has built at St. Mary's, there was a time before he arrived that St. Mary's was one of the doormats uh, of the West Coast Conference tournament, uh, West Coast Conference, and, and since he's arrived, it's a top ten winning percentage nationally in the last decade. He's done a tremendous job. He's produced pros like Matthew Delamadova, Patty Mills. There's some memorable matchups, especially even in Las Vegas, uh, that you and I have been lucky enough to cover over the year the, just some all-time classic games between these two in this arena on this stage Johnson cut off in the key Logan Johnson cut off again so Kyle Bowen will shoot his second three missed a second in a row Kispert trailed and got Fotu flying in the air with the shot fake went all the way to the rim and that's just awareness, great balance, elite level footwork by Corey Kispert. They understand St. Mary's is telling him no transition threes for Corey Kispert. So they're running hard at him. He stops, a little shot fake, then put it by and get all the way to the rim. Excellent job. The WCC Player of the Year, I, I think sure to be a first-team All-American. National Player of the Year candidate, Corey Kispert. Toss down low, double team came very nicely. Here's Johnson, who was the one guy for St. Mary's in their quarterfinal win who could put the ball in the basket, was way off on that one. Ayayi, they're going to call that offensive foul. Tommy Cousy takes the charge. The, the need for Logan Johnson to be efficient, though, and impact this game at the offensive end is huge for St. Mary's. That's a good call. He dipped his shoulder down. Ayayi could jump stop there, kind of forcing the issue, and sometimes when you're playing against a team, that wants to use the full 30 seconds of the shot clock at one end. You, you feel like you've got to manufacture speed. I think Ayayi would have been better served to jump stop, establish the offense, and work it in the half court. Well, the full court pressure is bugging the Gales a little bit. 
So they haven't gotten in their offense, and there's only 16 seconds left to go. And so that, the, the press is not designed to turn over. The press is designed to take up time to force them to maybe speed up a little bit in their half-court set. Toss. Should have shot it. He passed it out of bounds. That's a turnover. I want to go back to Logan Johnson for a second, though. You were talking about him. Offensively, he's going to have to have like a, tw a plus 25-point night. I mean, he had 25 on Saturday. He had 26 earlier this year against Santa Clara. He's more than capable of doing it. In the last four games, averaging 19 and a half points. If St. Mary's has any chance in this game, he has to have a huge night. Three from the right side. Quick shot by Gale Standards by Judah Brown. No good. Here comes Jalen Suggs leading the way for Gonzaga. He loves those drop back transition passes, and Ayayi pays it off with the three. Why well, wouldn't you love it when you've got shooters that can fill the lane and has such great balance and spacing? Ayayi able to dial it up. Kuzi again into the lane, and again just could not get the layup to this. go. So there's Suggs with the outlet. It was knocked out of bounds, and I guess it went off Nemhard's hands. So the Gales. Did a good job there. Is it still have to make shots though? And St. Mary's made their first shot from the field. And since then they've gone 0 for 7. You, know, you talk about stylistically, the difference is Dave. I mean, just you, you see the pace of play per 40 minutes. One ranks fourth in the country, the other one ranks ranks 348. And, and St. Mary's wants to be very deliberate. They want to frustrate you defensively. Get a couple second side, third side ball reversals and see if they can find a, a seam to attack. Do to Brown, banked it in. Well, I don't know if that was by design, but St. Mary's will take any basket they can get. Kispert, I mean, he has been passing up the threes early in this game. He leans in to draw contact, shifted to the left hand, got the shot off. And drew the foul. And I just think everything that Gonzaga's doing right now out on this floor is so businesslike, so organized, Dave. It, what, it, it really is what makes them so elite. You know, th there are teams that have good offenses. This offense is not good. It is great. And you look at the efficiency in which they're playing with in this game already. They're 4 of 5 to start. They're 2 of 2 from beyond the arc. They, they've done absolutely everything that they've wanted to do so far, and they're creating tempo, and they're creating the pace that they want to play at, even with St. Mary's taking time off the clock at the, at the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, it's like there's no frustrating this Gonzaga team. Kispert knocks down both free throws, and he has the look, Sean, of a player who, even though he went through a little bit of a shooting slump mid-season, mid-conference season at least, and he's one of the elite shooters in the sport he looks like he is ready to finish this season on a very high note he was only 5 of 16 at the west coast conference tournament last year he did not shoot the ball really well at all and you got to imagine with the year that he's had and, and having a larger role and a bigger point of emphasis at the offense that, that this is a tournament where he's going to come and assert himself i mean their, their goals their aspirations are focused on the ncaa tournament uh, but they know that every time they take the floor they're going to be the hunted and they're they're going to receive the best shot from their opponent Man, did Jalen Suggs make that look easy. His first basket of the night, the freshman from St. Paul, Minnesota, who is unlike, I think, unlike any other. They've had so many great players the Zags had, have over their history, but I think he's different than almost anybody they've ever had. Cousy in the lane, and that one finally goes down for Tommy Cousy. St. Mary's, you've got to do a... a, a an abnormal job of drawing fouls. Can you get Gonzaga in foul trouble? Can you frustrate them enough to attack them in those moments and be able to garner a foul and get a trip to the free throw line? But that's probably not, you're not the kind getting of foul. Any stops. <laughs> I don't think they are. That's the thing. You, 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 who do you concentrate your defense on? We've seen everybody involved early. Dave, you and I were talking to, to Marcus Schroeder, the assistant coach at St. Mary's, and, and I asked him flat out. I said. What's the number you have to keep Gonzaga to in order to have a chance to win the game? He goes, we got to keep them at 65. Now, that's 30 points basically below their season average. So you're asking an awful lot of your defense. Allowing them to shoot 86% in the first seven minutes of the game, you're not going to keep them under 65 points. No. And by the way, getting 265 is a supreme challenge for this particular St. Mary's team. They, they haven't... 
gotten more than 65 in any game since December. Logan Johnson, well, they need a lot of that from him. Quick oh, three wow. in transition, but Kispert came up a little bit short. The, the ability of Suggs, though, to drop that pass in is so impressive to watch. Well, there you go, Logan Johnson, couple baskets in a row. He is the one guy, Sean, that we feel like maybe has a chance in a, a game against this Gonzaga team to sort of keep up offensively. Kispert pass got knocked away, and St. Mary's comes up with a steal. Toss. And that one, the feed from Tommy Cousy was deflected. Three on two. Kispert in transition. Kispert, no, but a blocking foul. They are so explosive in transition. Their ability to change ends, the lanes, and understanding floor spacing, how to run, how to get out in transition. They apply pressure on you defensively the second they get the ball in their hands. If you're a defensive player, it's not just about defensive transition and getting back. It's about matching up correctly, which sometimes means that you've got to pick somebody else up. You can't be just looking for yours. If you're looking for yours, somebody else is going to be wide open for Gonzaga. Two more free throws for Kispert. He'll check out for the first time. Aaron Cook, who is a grad transfer from Southern Illinois, who hasn't played huge minutes for this Gonzaga team, but has given them very quality minutes off the bench. There is a little glimpse at that number you were talking about a moment ago, Sean. Already seven free throw attempts for the Zags. St. Mary's hasn't been to the line. Yeah, they're just controlling every aspect of this game, and you anticipate that uh, from the number one team in the country and how they've played all of conference play. Well, they left Kyle Bowen almost like by design wide open, so he's going to have to make that shot, and he did. He had a tough night the other night against Eli Scott. I mean, he got beat up physically in that game against Eli Scott. Give him credit for bouncing back. Drew Timmy, what a move. When he catches the ball in that position on the floor, it is almost unstoppable, Dave. Suggs jumped right in the passing lane, then saved it inbounds to Ayayi. Ayayi will give it off to Cook, who had his shot blocked by Johnson. That was good transition defense to save the layup. But we will go to a tournament. It, it, it is, and, and this is the kind of venue that normally, Dave, you and I would be sitting there courtside. This place would be sold out. The passion of both of these fan bases would be overflowing. The Kennel Club would be sold out and rocking as this team has been so special all season long to watch. I think for St. Mary's, I think they've got to feel really good right now about how close they are in this game, considering how much they've struggled, how much they've allowed Gonzaga to get out and run. It's only an eight-point game. And they have started to make some shots. That's their first miss in a while. Alex Dukas, who's missed a lot of time this year with injury. Gales are glad to have him back on the court. Drew Timmy, the big man, can run. He can dribble. He can handle the ball. He can do just about everything. Uh, it, it's it's so impressive what he's been able to do in the last couple of weeks of this season. And Corey Kispert was running away with Conference Player of the Year. And then you watch at that. Look at that. Are you kidding me? The the center just ran the fast break and dropped down that pass, Dave. That's really, really impressive. And we've seen Drew Timmy. I mean, he is just so skilled for a big man. kuzi has been way too sloppy with the ball in these first few minutes. Threw that one right out of bounds. That's the St. Mary's turnover. This is what you're talking about. Look at the balance. Final game. Drew Timmy, we've seen him so many times this year. Last year, have monster games. He had a huge game against St. Mary's. Almost like his coming out party last season against the Gales. Timmy got shoved there. No whistle, and he turns it over. You know, Dick Vitale was talking about it yesterday during the Texas Tech Baylor game saying hey It was Timmy time. It was Timmy time last year in Las Vegas this time of year And it really was it, the first look that the nation had at the elite level footwork But as Mark Few told us yesterday, he expected Drew Timmy to be able to come and make this this impact Another backdoor look from the big man Timmy as Corey Kispert goes to the bucket to lay it in Well, the good news for St. Mary's is on this end of the floor, Sean, they've so shown some signs. It looks like the Gales 
are going to have a better offensive night than they had on Saturday night. But on this end, no resistance thus far. No, and, and what happens is when you, you pressure out, right, and there's so many weapons, everybody on the weak side is hugging their man. And when you pressure the ball that much, it allows that back cut and, and to be a pressure release. And Gonzaga time and time again makes the right read and the right pass. Extra pass in the corner. Problem is Kyle Bowen's just not a real willing shooter. Dukas, though, followed that miss with an offensive rebound. Kuzi couldn't finish. Ayayi saved inbound. That was not a great pass by Joel Ayayi. There have been times this year, Sean. I mean, if you're looking for a weakness for the team that's been wire to wire number one and just totally dominant this year, at times, Gonzaga's been a little sloppy with the ball. The turnover numbers have been a little high. I think a lot of the turnovers that we've seen so far tonight, and there haven't been many, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're nitpicking. But they've got six turnovers in this game right now, Dave, and that's, that's a little too high, but I think part of that is they're trying to make plays in transition, and they have to just value it a little bit better. You know, they, they have to understand, like, hey, we want to run, we want to create pace, we want to force St. Mary's to play at our tempo, but some of those passes, they've been high degree of difficulty. Toss, squares, shoots, no good. Pretty good look for the big man, Matthias Toss, who is a good scoring big man. Suggs down low, Timmy got that great position, and from there it's just about automatic. You have to do your work early. If you allow him to get that deep of post position, it is over. It's done. Well, Timmy's got nine points, hasn't missed a shot from the field. Toss one on one against Timmy with the little baby hook shot. It finally fell down. St. Mary's just got to just try to stay close enough, right? They just got to be try to stay close enough, and they've got to try to see if they can string together multiple stops. The problem right now for them is at this end. Uh, they're allowing Gonzaga to shoot 70-plus percent so far, and we're almost 13 minutes into this game. Jalen Suggs had a good look from three, missed it. Logan Johnson steps back into a three, no. Yai went right by Dukas and scored. Now, Dukas has not played a lot of minutes, coming back from injury, and I, I think it goes back to one of Rick Majerus's points of what makes a great offense is knowing who's guarding you. And Joel Yai has a, a distinct advantage, athletically, quickness, foot speed, game speed, reps over Alex Dukas. They're going to call that an offensive foul and wave off the basket. So no bucket for the Gale. 6.54 to go. First half. Zags in the lead. Florida State is the team that might be able to make the longest run in the NCAA tournament. Leonard Hamilton's team is deep. They're athletic. They're talented. Uh, but they were disconnected at the defensive end of the floor last time out. A yeah, very strange finish to a really good year for Florida State. Anton Watson, who doesn't score a lot for Gonzaga. I still think he is an important player on this Zags team. Missed that shot. Is the talk of being stars in your roles. What are your roles? And can you be a star within your role? Who wants to shoot for St. Mary? Passed up a couple looks. Tommy Cousy missed the running two. But an offensive rebound for the freshman Mitchell Saxon. And, and Saxon's got to go right up with that. You get an offensive rebound that deep in the paint, you cannot just dribble the ball out. Those are second chance points opportunities that you have to manufacture and be successful with. Good defense there by Watson. I think Fotu fell down. Suggs in transition. Just sort of surveyed. Found Nemhart open for the three. Double team came on Saxon. Ball movement. Clinton this time will shoot. Got knocked down. No whistle. Saxon, another offensive rebound, but again, just kicked it out. Well, when you kick it out, what's the likelihood you're going to find a better shot? It hasn't been very good so far. 
This time he makes a move. I mean, he's got some skill. He's a good young player. He's on the all WCC freshman team this year. I just want to see him be a little bit more assertive around the basket. Dave, I want to go back to the last transition bucket, though, for Gonzaga. It's the little things about what they do. Watch Joel Ayayi. He's going to face cut there, and because he face cuts, it just freezes the defense. Clinton freezes just a little bit, number two in blue. And, and because he freezes, that creates a little bit longer of a run out to get to the outside. Kispert gets it back. He's always ready to shoot. Miss that time. St. Mary is so deliberate within their offensive sets. Every single possession. A late shot clock foul called against a Yai. So he'll come out of the game. Yai. Two personal fouls, so he may well sit out the final four and a half minutes. Hey, there can't be, can there, in college basketball a better? I mean, it's almost insulting to call him their fourth scoring option, but I think that's exactly what he is. He, he's, he'd be the best player on a whole heck of a lot of teams. He's he's option number four for the Zags. It just speaks to the talent level in which this team has. I mean, you're talking about guys that are up for national honors and awards across college basketball that have, as Mark Few said, they garnered a lot of attention early and then have never relinquished the attention that was given to them. Kuzi somehow got that one to go. Nice layup by Tommy Kuzi. You talk about Kuzi. I mean, you're talking about a guy who walked on. He's a senior, earned a scholarship. He's playing with a level of importance. He understands what his role is, but can you stop him? Yeah. Can you stop number two? That is a question that everybody's going to have to figure out. He is five for five in this game. He's got three assists in this contest already. And that goes with his last five games where he has 95 points in 117 minutes played. Let me repeat. 95 points in 117 minutes played, shooting 78% from the field during that stretch. That's the last five games for Timmy. Yeah, amazing. He's actually shooting better from the field than the free throw line. And and if the, if there's something that might be a red flag for down the line with Timmy, I mean, he does need to make a few more of those free throws. He typically has been a good free throw shooter. Bucket again for the Gales. Timmy, every once in a while he'll shoot from the outside, but the Zags like it better when Kispert's the one shooting the threes. Uh, you give St. Mary's some credit. At least they're kind of hanging around. A lot of things haven't gone well. That was uh, not a bad pass, I didn't think. And not a bad pass, Dave, but it's been a great showing for Drew Tim. And so they've been putting themselves down 10, three minutes left to go. How are you going to be able to work and, and try to execute in that time stretch to come back and win? And they're tallying all of these results, and I think that's what they're trying to do to keep this edge sharp for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. I mean, it was a good explanation, I thought, for Mark Few. Another turnover for the Zags. So, again, that maybe has been the one bugaboo here in this first half. Duke has just had it stripped away by Watson. Suggs in transition, glided right past the defense. And, and you think about St. Mary's and how good they are at the defensive end. And a lot of their numbers at the defensive end are, are based on their pace of play at the offensive end and how they limit the number of possessions, Dave. But Gonzaga has been able to force the issue in this contest, very similar to how they forced the issue against Virginia, the number one seed in the ACC, when they scored 98 points against the Cavaliers earlier this season. When Clinton, the three, off the mark, knocked out of bounds by Mitchell Saxon. Randy Bennett's going deep into his bench, just trying to find some sort of combination. I think mostly a combination that can put the ball in the basket a little bit. Kyle Bowen will check back in. And this team you mentioned, it's different. Look, they, they don't have a, a Jordan Ford. They don't have a Stephen Holt. They don't have a Matthew Delavadova on this team. Uh, a, a Brad Waldo that can score with his back to the basket on a consistent basis.
Yeah, and it, it especially stands out, Sean, with the shooting. Oh. Timmy, again, he stays perfect from the field. He's six for six in the first half. And, and LaFonso Ellis was talking about this at the under four time out there about his footwork. Drew Timmy has the best footwork of any big in college basketball this year. And, and I love Luca Garza. And Luca Garza's strong and he's physical, but you watch the moves and how light Timmy is and how he always keeps his base strong underneath him. It's very impressive to watch. Good movement on defense by Gonzaga. Timmy went for a steal. They got back and recovered. Kuzi has to heave one up with the shot clock winding down. It was an air ball. Demhard. That was a real tough shot off the front rim. The addition of him in the starting lineup. I love this lineup that is out on the floor right now. I think this lineup is just so explosive. Their ability to cause so many problems for you at the offensive end of the floor. You, you cannot shrink the floor. You cannot help off the perimeter guys. If you do, they're gonna they're gonna dice you up. Timmy, I mean, how many times have we said this in this half? He runs the floor. He gets to that spot. They get him the ball, and you cannot stop him once that happens. It, it doesn't matter it matter which block it is. He can turn center. He can spin baseline. You allow him to post up within five feet. You're giving up a layup. Suggs had it momentarily stripped away, but guess who was there to pick the ball up? Dave, this is like the San Francisco game. I mean, he's played 16 minutes. He's 7 of 7. He has 15 points in this game. Uh, you and I said that night he could have scored 40 if he'd wanted to and they'd wanted him to. It feels like that kind of game where he could... If, if they kept feeding him the ball, he could score almost as many points as he wanted. There's his first miss. Ball knocked out of bounds with four on the shot clock. Watch Drew Jimmy. Look at how he beats this guy to the spot, how he pins and seals, holds off, utilizes the positioning of the body, feels where the defensive player is, and then spins off of him. All right, quick timeout, 30-second break. We'll be back for set shooting here in the first half. With four to shoot. Inbound to Kispert with a little shot fake. Bowen blocked it. Kispert got it back. That was good defense for the Gales. It turns into a shot clock violation. And, and one of the things they talked about at shoot around today for St. Mary's is understanding out of bounds underneath. They try to get the ball in the hands of number 24 as, as much as they possibly can. And the Zags commit a foul. Now, St. Mary's not in the bonus, so they had a foul to give with 10 seconds to go in the first half. St. Mary's will inbound the ball. Here's Kuzi, clock winding down. Tommy Kuzi got Timmy in the air and hit the shot. Nice way for a tough first team. That's what they do this year. And Gonzaga is shooting 65%. They have 30 points in the paint in a half against the St. Mary's team that builds its whole defense around not allowing points in the paint. Dave, they, they live in the paint. They are one of the best teams scoring in the paint in all of college basketball, and that's a prime example of Drew Timmy's impact on the on the block. Again, you bring attention to him, you turn your head, you watch the ball, they are cutting and they're moving off the ball, and he's a great distributor of it. So add to that total, back to a 20-point lead, Jalen Suggs, who is so disruptive on the defensive end. This is... Matt Harms was named the West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He's 7'3". He's a good shot blocker for BYU. He's a good defensive player. If I'd been voting, that's the guy that I would have voted for. Now, Harms has been so disruptive with blocking shots in particular as of late. Uh, he has been sensational. We'll see him in the second game against Pepperdine. And Colby Ross, one of the elite players in the WCC and really all of college basketball. He, he's, he's just thinking 40 more minutes and let's get to a game tomorrow night. And then let's see what I can do in that moment. He's been he's been outstanding, Dave, for, for Lorenzo Romo. Yeah, he has. So we can't wait for that one. That'll be midnight Eastern over on ESPN2, Pepperdine at BYU. BYU seems like a team that is uh, firmly in the NCAA tournament field. It's been a remarkable year. For Mark Pope's team in a lot of ways for a lot of different reasons. All right, continue to hit that. Not a perfect night for Drew Timmy, but a yeah, he got shoved hit in the offensive glass.
there is such a business-like approach to what Gonzaga does, Dave. I mean, and, and how difficult is it in a pandemic season to bring this level and this effort on a consistent basis? I mean, you, you show up, you're fairly confident you're going to win by at least 20 points in, in conference play, even against teams that are that are like BYU that, are, that have the opportunity to go to the NCAA tournament and will be an NCAA tournament team and hear their name called. Everybody you played in the non-conference, you took care of business, and, and yet they still find ways to motivate themselves. Johnson scores with a foul for the Gales. Now, Logan Johnson has to have a huge second half, Dave. I mean, if you're talking any chance here for a miracle for St. Mary's to come back in this game, Logan Johnson has got to be a lot more efficient and a lot more aggressive than he was in the first half. Six points, three of eight shooting. Completes the three-point play with the free throw. Ayayi, that was kind of a tough shot. Timmy grabbed the offensive rebound as he was falling down. He got rid of the ball, and he's, I, I think his shoe came off. He was stomping the floor, and I was wondering what was going on. I think he was just trying to get his shoe back on. Suggs offensive rebound, Jalen Suggs off the glass. A strong athletic move by Jalen Suggs. Talk about some offensive rebounds St. Mary's had in the first half. They, they didn't take that opportunity to finish. Jalen Suggs doesn't care. I mean, he is so athletic, so quick, so crafty with the ball. He's only taken four shots, Kyle Bowen wide open. I mean, those are the shots that in years past, St. Mary's knocks down this year. They've just had a hard time with it. Suggs has a matchup now with the big man. Decided to step out and hit the three. If he starts knocking down the three-point shot with any level of consistency, that makes this, this offense even click to another gear. It's funny, Jalen Suggs hasn't been much of a scorer, at least not at the level he was in the non-conference during the league season. He had those huge games against some of the toughest opponents that Gonzaga faced all year. Well, Dave, that's his first three-pointer in the last four games. Wow. This is where he's just so good out of the open court with that athleticism and he just can rise up He's got size at the point guard spot. He makes that look totally easy It's picking and choosing your moment, right? I mean, that's that that's how good this team is for Gonzaga is they can pick and choose their moments Offensively and they know that their moments will come. They don't have to force the issue because they're so unselfish You know, you're gonna have the opportunity to get going Suggs gave up the three and found Nemhard who missed the layup. My goodness, what a cool play from Jalen Suggs. And then Andrew Nemhard just couldn't finish. Suggs might have gotten knocked in the throat. St. Mary's going to call a timeout. So just when it looked like the Gales, hey, cutting into the lead. Here come the Zags again. 16-32 to go. Taking advantage of it and exploiting it. And then they explode on you offensively. You're talking about a 7-0 run in the last minute and a half for Gonzaga. Yeah, nobody in the country, nobody scores in short bursts faster and more explosively than the Zags do. Logan Johnson had it stripped away. Then got a good look, just didn't hit the shot. Drew Timmy got benched because he missed two shots in a row. He's only seven for ten now, so he goes to the bench. Sorry, Drew. <laughs> Kispert. You know, Corey Kispert, Sean, he, yeah, that's a, another good move by him. He spent a lot of time this year playing the four position for Mark Few. But Mark Few challenged him to play like what we would have considered in other years out of position, and he's really handled it well. And it goes to his physical conditioning. Mark Few said he might be the most physically fit player he's ever had in this program. That he has worked so hard on his conditioning, his strength development. So Kispert having a big night. Watson fumbled that out of bounds. Big night in the West Coast Conference. And we're going to have a conversation with Gloria Navarez. The Demons Day. Uh, and you're one of ten Division One. Uh, commissioners that, that is a woman. What does that mean to you to break so many different barriers in your path and your career uh, to elevate up to this point? 
Well, you know, the 10 female commissioners have been so welcoming um, and supportive, and we have each other's back, so that's been amazing. But we also have three female athletic directors in our league, and Joan McDermott at USF, Janet Lucas at University Pacific, and Renee Baumgartner at Santa Clara. Very impressive. Uh, we're talking to Gloria Navarez, who is uh, courtside in Las Vegas. This is sort of the culmination, Gloria, of your basketball season. Basketball means so much to the West Coast Conference. We've heard from people around the country, Gloria, times this year. Uh, is this all worth it? Everybody's had to make sacrifices, jump through a lot of hoops, be flexible. So I'll ask you, was all this worth it to get to this point tonight? We certainly think so. And, you know, the student athletes had the opportunity to opt out and you know, we had quite a few of them not opt out, and we had a 75% completion rate on the regular season on the men's side and a 95% completion rate on the women's. So we are feeling good about this season. In, in a non-traditional year, you went the non-traditional route. I think it was very progressive in, in the thought process of how you were going to see this conference tournament. Uh, and people will look at the win-loss record in conference play for St. Mary's and say, okay, wait, wait, hold on. How were they the four seed? But you guys went to Ken Pomeroy. And you used analytics to help discover what the true seedings would be based on strength of schedules. What went into that thought process? You know, in a Some normal five. season, the conference tournament seeding is supposed to be a reflection of your body of work in Some conference season. play. And when we had such a disparate conference play as far as number of games, who you played, top of the league or the bottom of the league, we had to find a different way to figure out how to most fairly seed the tournament. Glory, before we let you go, enjoy the rest of this game since you brought up the women's side. Give us a little quick overview because the women's tournament gets played alongside the men's tournament in Las Vegas. You've got your final matchup set on the women's side. How, how good of a season has it been in women's basketball for the WCC? It really has been a strong season. We're optimistic we'll get two teams in the tournament. And, you know, we just keep continuing to be amazed by the quality of play on the floor on the women's side. So we couldn't be more pleased. Well, we love hearing your voice, seeing your face. Sorry we're not there in person, but great to see you, Gloria. Thanks for all the work you do for the WCC. Thank you, guys. And she said optimistic on the women's side to get two teams in. It's a lock on the men's side to see two teams get in the NCAA tournament. Mark Pope's team, which is going to come up a little bit later on tonight on ESPN2, they have been playing their best basketball of the year. Uh, they are essentially a lock as an at-large team into the NCAA tournament. And obviously, if they were able to win tonight and beat Gonzaga tomorrow, they, they'd get the automatic qualifier, but they're going to be in the field. Well, it's, I think it's good to see Gloria hear from the commissioner after everything that this league and every league around the country. Mitchell Saxon, nice move, scores the basket with a foul. And you hear about the, the ability for this conference to get through the regular season like everybody else around college basketball. Gloria played college hoops, very impressive person. I mean, she is... She is a, a person in the landscape of college athletics who has more and more influence as the years go by, and deservedly so. She's done a great job. In this league, uh, and, you know, look, she was in the mix in the conversation uh, for the ACC commissioner's job. Uh, there's a lot of conversation that she could be very well in the mix for the Pac-12 opening with Larry Scott leading. She used to work in that office. I think she'd be a great commissioner for the Pac-12. She knows the geographical footprint, the landscape of the conference. That's five that second defense. violation. Yeah, great defense. And Tommy Cousy, St. Mary's didn't call the timeout, held on to it too long. Just a sensational job being disruptive at the defensive end and frustrating for Randy Bennett. I mean, his teams usually have very good flow at the offensive end. We went back to some of those games that, that were losses for Gonzaga against St. Mary's in the WCC tournament. There's a lot of games that they won that were high-level, elite-played contests as well that went back and forth. Good catch by Alex Dukas. O2 down low. Timmy came from behind with the double team and stripped it away. Hand off to Kispert, who will lay it in off the glass. Beautiful and basketball. Continuity and flow out of transition. Reading the defense, dribble handoff. A little bit poor communication. You have a breakdown on that play. It's it's a layup. It was just beautifully run. 
Oh, two, that shot. Suggs got up there and blocked it off the backboard. He said it was still going up, but they call a goal 10. <laughs> and meanwhile, Gonzaga is up 28 points. My math is getting better. My math is getting better, Dave. All right, but they, they've just been so efficient. Watch this. Look at the defensive end. Uh, that was a block. That I was think it not, was. That was not goaltending. That was a block. And if Mike Schmitz is watching, I want to ask once again. You gave him a C on his length. A C. <laughs> uh, we love Mike Schmitz. He does a great job. But that one confused us a little bit. <laughs> Mike's been so great all season long, breaking down these prospects as they head towards their future in the NBA draft. And you have to celebrate the one and dones while they're there. And Jalen Suggs, this is his lone season at Gonzaga. I mean, he's, he's projected to be a top five pick. These are all A's. And then he gave him a C in length. I mean, and watch after that you block brought it up, and that athleticism. After you brought it up, he pulled it off the report card. He just got rid of the yeah. category. <laughs> just we're not talking about that one anymore. Suggs missed. Jalen Suggs is here. going to be a star at the next level. He is yeah. going to be a star. Logan Johnson used the screen. Johnson against Timmy. No. Rebound went right, I think, off the back of Suggs, and Gonzaga saved it. Nemhard opening for three. No. Toss grabs it. One of the things that makes Gonzaga difficult is that all of these guys have the green light. I mean, you, no pass in the offense, come off a screen, the defense goes under, go ahead, take the shot. Everybody plays with such freedom, and when you have freedom at the offensive end of the floor, it becomes infectious. You don't worry about the number of shots you're going to get because everybody knows that, hey, if I'm open, I'm going to get a shot. Yeah, good play by Kuzi to find toss, and not to pile on St. Mary's, but St. Mary's is almost the opposite, where who is a willing shooter and scorer on this team? Logan Johnson has sort of become that. But I think if there's a formula to beat the, I mean, you cannot beat the Zags to me with just defense. You have to be a powerful offensive team to be able to hang with this one. And that's why there's so few of teams in college basketball that I believe can beat this Gonzaga team. I think you look at those rest of this top one line, you can say, okay, yeah, I, I, I could see Illinois. I could see a Michigan. I could see a Baylor on Sunday. And I, I would say, Sean, that I can't wait, but I can wait because... I want to see how Champ Week shakes out, and uh, you know we'll, we'll see how much shakeup there is. I mean, maybe not on the top line, but it seems to me there could still be a lot of shakeup in that grouping that we're looking at there. I, I believe the Big 12 tournament is going to be absolute chaos, and one of the teams you got to really watch. Hey, Kate Cunningham, uh, we projected number one pick by Mike Schmitz, uh, was. You know, the player of the year this year inside the Big 12, and you look at the way that they played without him and Isaac Likely against West Virginia, that's a team you have to watch and keep your eyes on and see how they perform in Champ Week. Andrew Nemhard, little floater, came up way short. So a couple minutes of some sloppier play on the offensive end for the Zags, and Logan Johnson will draw a foul on this end. How great is this week, though? I mean, it, considering where we were a season ago, and to where we're at now and knowing that we're going to get through this week and knowing that there's going to be an NCAA tournament I it just it just makes me smile. I, it just I'm so excited I'm so thankful for all these players all these coaches and all that they've gone through this year uh, To provide us the opportunity to tell their stories cover them celebrate their successes it Makes me just want to grab the Farnham flatbread and sit down and just relax and enjoy the games so you don't even have to give the ingredients anymore. Now it has no. a name. This made yeah, it so much it easier for you, this whole thing. <laughs> Logan Johnson hits that free throw. Well, I'm with you. And uh, look, I, it, but, uh, these kids are getting to do what they love. Has it been easy? It hasn't been easy. But I hope that this week and the weeks that follow are a reward for the teams and the players who have worked so hard in such a strange year. I hope, I hope they enjoy every minute of it. We lost a ton of stories last year, whether it was San Diego State, whether it was a Dayton, even a Rutgers, and Steve Peichel's team you know, going to the NCAA tournament a year ago, even though they're going to make it this year. You know, there, there was a lot of stories that were lost, and now we have an opportunity to really celebrate these players in this moment. After that last turnover for the Zags, I don't know if you could see Sean in the background, but Mark Few threw his hands up in the air. He, I think he's been frustrated these last couple minutes. Maybe that'll make him feel better. 
You know, it, it's it's understanding how crisp and how sharp you're going to need to be moving forward, right? And and they can get away with it tonight. They might even be able to get away with it tomorrow. But it, it, if you're turning the ball over 11, 12, 13 times in what could be a one possession game in the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight, to be the difference of winning a national championship, playing on, or going home. And that's well, a that sloppy pass too. Yeah, that, that's an example of you, it just there's no reason to do that. Well, good job, Mark Few. This coaching staff, one of the things that people go all the time, what makes Gonzaga great? Are Mark Few and the consistency that he has in his program, the consistency in his staff and the balance that he has in his own life. How he, how he, you know, it, what he puts importance on, how he manages the relationship between his responsibilities as head coach of Gonzaga and that in, in, in being centered and understanding the values. I remember when you and I first started covering the Zags, Mark's sons were, were out on the floor shooting around before we came in. And during games, they'd be right behind the bench. It's a family yeah, by the way, community. They were about ideas. two at that point. <laughs> well, you're aging us. You're aging us, Dave. I already yeah, feel old enough. When you're, my youngest is now in double digits. I, I'm feeling old today. Happy birthday, Kellen. Now Logan Johnson gets another one to go. I don't think there's a coach in the country, as long as we're talking Mark Few, I don't think there's a coach in the country who balances get better, take it seriously, value winning, have championship goals, and also enjoying the journey and having fun and having fun together and taking some of the pressure off his players who have those huge, huge expectations every single year. He just threads that needle so perfectly to me, but I think better than anybody. Well, you see him talking to the bench, even on that bounce, he's coaching the guys on the bench saying, hey, we got to do this, we got, like, it, it's what makes this program unique. It's a unique program. I mean, if you're a great player, why wouldn't you want to go to Gonzaga? They turn out pros. You have a chance to win a national championship. Play at the highest of levels. Great job. Logan Johnson, by the way, he tried to dunk on somebody the other night, and he, he I think he was trying to attack the rim there. Little championship. And what that makeup kind of looks like in the last 43 seasons, all champions have had at least two games that they've lost. 35 have lost a game by 10. Six have lost one by 20. One has lost one by 30. That was UConn. Now, obviously, Gonzaga would be the outlier to all of this because if they win tonight and they win tomorrow night, then the only option for them to win a national championship would be to be the first perfect season that we've seen in college basketball since 75 and 76. That's the option that Zags and their fans are hoping to select this year. Ayayi throws one up and in. Joel Ayayi, super efficient tonight. Man, he's hardly he's missed one shot from the field. And 44 points of their 69 have been in the paint. And yeah, we see a lot of it with Jim Timmy with his back to the basket, but we also see a lot of ball uh, Straight line drives movement without the ball in their hands making positive plays They call Suggs for the offensive foul there. He might have taken another shot to the nose or the face something like that now That's not a charge I didn't think so, but Jalen Suggs will walk back to the defensive end. You know, another thing, Sean, as long as we're talking about expectations and this program and how it fits nationally, you and I have said it a lot this year in the last several years. The idea that Gonzaga is an underachiever in the tournament is tired, and it is not true. Gonzaga 100%. had a few years, maybe 15 years ago, maybe even a decade ago, where they were upset a couple times in the tournament. Last five tournaments, two Sweet 16s, two Elite Eights, the dunk in transition for Watson. What a nice pass. And one national championship game. And and who knows, maybe part of the reason why is the way that Mark Few schedules year in and year out in the non-conference. You know, really aggressive non-conference schedule. In fact, next year, they've already announced they're going to play Duke in Las Vegas uh, on a neutral site. It's going to be a fantastic event in Las Vegas. But when you when you schedule elite and you have elite level players and you put yourself in the situation to be successful, you, you get uncommon results. And this has been an uncommon season in in a, 
in a very difficult year. And, you know, I, to your point, Dave, if, if there, there'll be people out there, and if Gonzaga loses in the NCAA tournament, and it, it, it happens to be their first loss, there'll inevitably be people that say, wow, what a disappointment. It, it is very difficult to go undefeated. That's why we haven't had one since 1976. You go back to that Kentucky team in 2014, 2015. Is it disappointing they were 38 and 1? I mean, yeah, they didn't win a national championship, but were they not a great team? I mean, you think about Devin Booker, Carl Anthony Towns, I mean, just tremendous talent that John Calipari had that year. That was a special group. This group is special. Now, whether or not they complete the task in Indianapolis, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, the cruel reality of sports often is if you don't get it done in that final game, you get remembered a little bit differently. But I'm with you. Corey Kispert from way outside. No good. And that's why the whole reason the tournament is as dramatic and fun as it is, is that it is a single elimination. That you can lose and your whole season, all your dreams are over. Your season is over. I mean, that's what makes the tournament so special. And we've seen that for every team across the country. And unfortunately, injuries have impacted a lot of rosters as of late. You got Colin Gillespie, Justin Moore from Villanova. You look at Joe Wiescamp from uh, Iowa turning his ankle yesterday. Kate Cunningham has missed time for Oklahoma State. Eli Brooks from Michigan had to get carried off the floor by Jawan Howard in that contest against Michigan State. And you want everybody healthy. You want everybody playing their best basketball of the season. Ayayi short that time, so a rare miss for him. Gonzaga has blown this game wide open. It's been this way most of the way, but they have uh, been in command. Dukas with the putback for St. Mary's. For Gonzaga, a change in their travel schedule. They came down yesterday instead of a Saturday. Trying to limit the amount of time that they spend in Las Vegas. Obviously looking ahead to that NCAA tournament, understanding you have to have seven consecutive days of testing protocols. And, and Mark Few told us a couple of weeks ago that, that really to, in order to do that, they've had to think a little bit more ahead. It really has to be 14 days out. And so that they've been kind of structuring things and making sure everybody understands the commitment that needs to be made right now is even stronger than the commitment they had during the course of the season. Suggs checks out. Uh, Mark View, I think, very happy with his overall performance. Uh, Jalen Suggs was great tonight. Well, and first taste uh, for him to be in a postseason tournament. And, and you forget that, and you watch him play, and you go, all right, well, talk so much about Drew Timmy. How'd Jalen Suggs do? Oh, he got seven rebounds. Goes seven of nine shooting, 15 points. Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> and they're just so efficient and so balanced. They're starting starters. You look at their starters and the field goal percentage amongst their starting five. It's well north of 55 percent. Watson went up for some sort of highlight dunk and missed it. That's going to make his head coach a little unhappy. But Julian Strother, a freshman who may be sort of the first guy after the 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 real regulars for the Zags, if something really went awry in a tournament game would come off the bench for Gonzaga. Strother got his first bucket of the night. Do you really Cousy. think Mark Few will be upset about that at the at the end of the game? you think he's going to say anything about the missed dunk? Well, I do think he will. Because you said I he was going to get upset. I, I think he will say something to Anton Watson about, I mean, you said it perfectly, be a star in your role. That's sort of the whole mantra of this Gonzaga team. <laughs> Anton Watson's role is to finish that shot, not to try to tomahawk dunk it and come up short i think he'll be more upset about that air ball than he will be the missed dunk wasn't a great shot selection i would say under three minutes to go semi-final number one we've got another game to come from las vegas johnson uh, mitchell saxon just wasn't ready for the pass Went out of bounds. So long night for Logan for the Gales of Randy Bennett. 77 51, 246 to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Special player that's playing his best basketball of his career down the stretch of the season. 
You know, ordinarily Gonzaga and uh, Drew Timmy's teammates, they don't miss those shots at the rim. He could have had seven, eight assists tonight, I think. There were a few opportunities where he fed back door and passes weren't handled and whatnot. He just had as good a game as I've ever seen him have passing the ball. I agree. And his feel and his guard-like skills, his ability to bring the ball up the floor in transition makes him a unique talent with a unique skill set. Uh, that is a, a big part of why the way, by the way, he's he's on the Wooden Award watch finalist list. You think about this with this Gonzaga team. We haven't even mentioned that. Okay, they will down the list to 15. Since 2011, and that's that's when they took it down all the way to 15 for the finalist list, there has never been a school that has had three players on the top 15 Wooden Award watch list. Gonzaga is the first. It has Suggs, it has Kispert, and it has Timmy. Nobody else. All right, let's, let's go one step further this year, Dave. ACC, SEC, and the Pac-12 combined for one player. It's Evan Mobley from, from the Pac-12. Not a single ACC or SEC player made the final 15 list for the Wooden Award watch list this year. Yeah, I, amazing in a lot of different ways. Lots of aspects of, of you describing that are sort of hard to believe, but... No team, uh, you're talking about a decade now since they whittled the list down in this fashion to 15 finalists. No team with as many as three. And until this year's Gonzaga Bulldogs. Star power and then some for the Zags. All right, so we've got two minutes to go. Sean, you and I have one more game to go tonight. And that'll be BYU and Pepperdine on ESPN 2 at midnight Eastern. So we'll have, what, about an hour before that game starts. Number one should be a very different game stylistically from this one. I think uh, a chance to see at least uh, we know Gonzaga can score. But Pepperdine and BYU, I think they would like a high-paced, action-packed game on both sides. Yeah, you're going to see one of the hottest teams in, in, in the month of February, Mark Pope's BYU Cougars, and they're going to go against... Colby Ross is over 400 rebounds. Only Gary Payton from Oregon State, obviously, the glove, and Chris Thomas from Notre Dame put up those type of numbers. Now, if you want to see a player that's playing his best basketball of his career, he's averaging 26 points and nine assists per game over the last three contests. Colby Ross, the all-time leading scorer and assist maker at Pepperdine, and broke Hank Gather's record for most points scored in the WCC tournament on a career. Just on Saturday night, special talent. And flip over to ESPN2 with us at midnight Eastern time. And now, look, we know that come tomorrow night, they're going to call that as an illegal screen. We know tomorrow night it's going to be a huge ask for either one of those teams to take down the number one team in the country. However, and this is not a knock on St. Mary's, just the way those two teams are built. I think both of them are better equipped than the Gales to at least give the Zags a run for their money tomorrow night. You, you have to be an offensive threat. You have to have multiple guys that can make plays. And as much as you talk about Colby Ross, you can talk about Kessler Edwards. You look at BYU. You look at Alex Barcelo and how well he's played all season long. And Brandon Avert and how well he's played as a guard and aggressively attacking. And then you got Matt Harms, who is at seven foot three. And if you, you're a Big Ten fan, you remember the name from Purdue. And he's the conference defensive player of the year. Twelve blocks in the last three games for BYU. And that doesn't even mention Caleb Lohner, who has been probably the biggest key to their success in the month of February. Some bench players getting a chance to play a few minutes here in this WCC semifinal. Martinez Arlauskas, Umar Balo. Dom Harris all in the game for the Zags. Final 45 seconds. Harris dumps it to Ballo, who lost it, but I guess it was touched by St. Mary's out of bounds. 13 seconds to shoot for the Zags. And Ballo was on the all-WCC freshman team this year. Numbers don't jump off the page. He's been very limited in his opportunities. Yeah, he had a couple chances in some blowout games. Had one game in particular that was a, a big scoring performance. Otherwise, was really quiet. They, they still believe he's got a lot of potential. Harris, tough shot, no good. Ballo offensive rebound. And he'll go to the free throw line. 
Well, for a team that also doesn't have a lot of length in the front court, I could see a scenario in the NCAA tournament where Ballo's going to have to play out on the court, not for his offense, uh, but for defense. Can he, can he be a larger presence in the paint? Can he alter shots? Can he be tough? Can he foul a little bit, make him earn it around the basket, allow Drew Timmy to have a break? Because if there's one thing that's different from this team and the team that went to the national championship, it's the lack of length that you have on the inside. Zach Collins of the world, Shemek Karnowski. Clark, Achimura, I mean, they've had so many great big men. Sabonis at Gonzaga in the last few years. And you're right, that How is a big Sabonis? difference. Sabonis won the skills challenge last night. <laughs> uh, he won the him. skills challenge in the NBA All-Star game. What a career he's made for himself. Final Kelly seconds Olenek from well. Las Vegas. Yeah, you're right. It's just one after another. Big man dunks it home with .4 on the clock. And that will do it. Our final score.